Hey, Nurse Awesome. So let's continue this wrap about communication. And I want to talk specifically about nurse-to-nurse -nurse communication. It's pretty funny. I've probably done 20 takes of this video, and usually I have a two-take rule, right? I just kind of turn the camera and let it roll. When it came to talking to you about nurse-to-nurse -nurse communication and how to do that better, it felt really important to me that I gave you something of value. So I thought for a minute about talking about emotional intelligence and therapeutic communication and using the SBAR technique. That's what all those other takes were about. So this time I'm just going to chat about what I've learned in school um, and in my personal experience over the last year um, kind of transitioning into the world of nursing and hopefully that will be some help to you. Um, first things first, you guys, when you're talking to other people, you have to understand that you're 100% responsible for the energy that you bring to the space. So that seems kind of airy-fairy, I guess, to some people. And what it really means is just that if you want for someone to be positive with you, if you want someone to be honest with you, if you want someone to be straightforward with you, if you want people not to talk trash about you, um, gossip about you, whatever you want to call it, then that's the energy that you have to bring to other people. It's kind of like the golden rule in action. You know, put out in the world what you want to get back. It really goes that way for communication too. Um, so I guess enough said about that. It'll help you a lot when you're trying to figure out how to communicate with other nurses if you'll take a minute and get to know them first. Um, what do they like? What do they hate? What are they passionate about? What is it about nursing that they love? Every single person that you meet is going to have something to offer you. Um, even if you find um, some time into the relationship that you two don't particularly vibe well together, there is still some gem of nursing knowledge that you can gather from those more experienced nurses. Um, and it's okay that you don't get along with everyone. You know, you're not going to be like the most popular with everyone. Some people are just you know, you're going to get on their nerves, just like some people get on your nerves. And that's just the way it is in life, right? So don't get all wrapped around the axle about it, trying to be perfect and trying to make everybody like you because that's just sort of wasted energy. Um, be yourself and kind of get to know other people and uh, let other people know who you are, and that will help you a lot. Um, there's another thing I want to tell you is not to believe what other people tell you about you know, your coworkers. Here's an example. When I was in school, I sat at the front of the class in theory because I tend to get kind of distracted. And I need there to be nothing between me and the professor, right? Um, there was a group of people sitting at the back the very first day. And in that group of people, there was this one chick, and she was really chatty. I could hear her from the front. She was laughing kind of loudly, and it was kind of annoying to me. I just sort of blew it off. But then after class, there was another girl that sat close to me. And she was going on and on about that particular chick um, that was in the back of the class laughing loudly, um, how bossy and controlling she was, um, saying some really awful things about her family. She was talking about what a bitch she was, how bossy she was. And I sort of just sat back and I thought, wow, like, it's the first day of class. How can you think all of those things about someone already? So at that moment, I knew that I needed to form my own opinion about people, and that's really what you should do too. Form your own opinion. Don't listen to the good opinion of others. Um, it turns out, by the way, that that particular person was not really bitchy or mean, although she is a little bossy sometimes. I kind of dig her, and we really got along well. In fact, she's the only person that I really still talk to from nursing school, really good friends. Um, if I had listened to the other opinion and just based my perception or my interactions with that person on that one person's opinion, I would have missed out on a lot of really cool stuff. So you guys don't listen to other people. Um, the other thing is kind of try to develop this respect for other people's habits um, and the person that they are, even if you don't particularly understand them. It's okay that they're different from you. Um, here's a, an example of that for me. I'm kind of hyper-organized when it comes to the way my patient's room looks. I need everything to be in a certain place. 
well, maybe not a certain place, but at, at least organized. When I walk in and there's stuff just strewn everywhere and the trash cans are all full and the patient is dirty, um, sort of makes me mad and I feel kind of disrespected. Um, I would never leave a dirty work area for another nurse to come into, right? So that used to annoy me to no end, you guys. And I sort of based my perception of someone off of that, um, you know, how they left their room. And what I figured out is that um, what's important to me is not always important to other people. And that's okay. You know, it's important to me that the room is clean and organized. It's not important to other people. And I need to, to work on it being okay for me that other people didn't have the same priorities as me. Now, that's just an ego-based statement, right? Wanting people to have the same priorities as me is just my ego saying, Hey, look at me. I'm important. You need to be like me, right? I had to figure out, I guess, from experience and just letting it go that it's okay that other people don't have the same habits as me. I can still communicate and get along with them well. Um, let's see. Deal with conflict very directly. Um, don't attack anyone. Just state the facts. You know, again, check yourself and the energy you're bringing to that conflict and you know, try to leave your ego behind. Admit your part in whatever the miscommunication is when it happens. Because I promise you, you have a part. Um, sometimes we want to think that the other person is the one that's at fault. When in truth, you know, we all kind of uh, have an equal share of responsibility in the way we send and receive information. Um, try to have a little bit of empathy with other people. You know, put yourself in their shoes if you feel like they're being super crank puss before you kind of confront them at that or come at them with this statement that says you need to stop being so crappy or crabby or whatever. You know, what are they going through? Do they have a particularly difficult patient load that day? Maybe it doesn't seem difficult for you, but maybe it's pushing some emotional buttons for them, you know. Maybe they are taking care of someone dying from cancer and they had someone close to them die from cancer. Maybe they're taking care of someone that tried to commit suicide and someone they love committed suicide, you know. You always got to try to put yourself in another person's position before you attack them or decide that they meant something schmarmy or rude by what they said, okay. Um, also, you know, open and honestly express your feelings to people about that. Like, hey, I feel like you're being really cranky. Is something going on? Is there something I can help you with? That sort of thing. Being open and honest always helps. Um, some good habits, I think, to get into, you guys. Be really slow to anger. You're going to work in the world of nursing. you got to get a thick skin. You cannot take things personally. Seriously. If you think people are being mean to you when they just bark something out, you are going to die quick. You're going to be miserable in this world of, of the hospital situation because, you know, it's stressful. Things get heated. You have a lot to do. Patients crash. Um, you can't take things personally ever. Um, people do and say things because of them, not because of you. All right. So if you have any questions about that, if you think someone is, is being crappy to you specifically for something about you, ask them. Most of the time they're going to be like, uh, I don't even remember what you were talking about. I don't remember being that way. Like people get in the heat of the moment and they just talk, they just bark, they just react. Um, if you can figure out what kind of personality someone has and if you can sort of establish a relationship with the people you work with, you're going to be able to smooth things out a lot more quickly um, than if you sort of like stand off and don't get to know those people. If you're honest with people um, and you express your feelings, they're going to be more likely to do the same thing with you. If you take responsibility for the energy that you bring to the space and remember not to take things personally, then the first year being a nurse will be a lot more smoothly for you. Now, take that information and then go study SBAR and therapeutic communication because that certainly helps you too. When it comes to nurse-to-nurse -to -nurse communication, 
really the biggest thing to, to remember is that you're all on the same team, you know. You all have the same goal, which is to provide excellent care to your patients. Um, sometimes it's like living with your family. You get on each other's nerves um, and you get over it, especially if you can develop a thick skin and not take things personally, okay? If you have any questions about how to communicate better or you're running into some kind of tricksy situations with other nurses, you can email me. I'll be happy to chat with you about that. Otherwise, uh, next time we're going to talk about communication with patients, all right? Until then, you guys don't get the flu. It's really bad right now. Um, I send you great wishes for a great semester. Peace, y'all.